Hi guys, welcome back to the Ultimate Recycler. One of the things I really enjoy about this line of, of work is uh, is the satisfaction of saving things from, from being wasted and being thrown out and uh, restoring things so they have a practical use or value adding um, so that something that you could sell, you can now sell for more because it's restored if you like. So I'm going to show you uh, cleaning up, how I clean up old metal uh, tools, uh, rusty relics, um, mainly steel, but it works on brass and copper. Um, but the best results are in, in with old steel and tools. And I'm going to show you how I clean them up with electrolysis. Now, um, things like this rusty old hook um, got out of the scrap bin. Someone was throwing it in the scrap. Old pliers I dug out from under a workbench. Um, they're pretty well seized up. Uh, there's probably a brand on them. But rather than throwing them out or throwing them in scrap metal, um, we should be able to bring those back to life. So stay tuned after this and I'll show you how to set up inexpensively an electrolysis tank that you can use at home to clean up and restore items. Okay, now here's what you need to set up your electrolysis tank. Um, I've just used an old wheelie bin here. Uh, you could use a plastic barrel or a large tub. Um, pretty well uh, anything, as long as it doesn't conduct electricity, you're going to be right to use. Uh, and of course you need it large enough to be able to immerse whatever you want to clean in water in the tank. Um, the electricity supply is just a standard 12 volt battery charger. Uh, now to add to the water to uh, make it an electrolyte, so it conducts electricity, uh, is just washing soda, uh, easily obtainable in, uh, in Australia. It's marketed as electric soda, um, quite safe. In fact, I think you, you bathe in it to stop aches and pains. Um, so it's just, uh, the compound is sodium carbonate, um, so that's best to use. Um, you wouldn't want to use table salt to make the water, uh, the solution salty because you'll produce uh, chlorine gas. This just produces oxygen and hydrogen. Uh, you need an anode to connect the positive of the battery charger to. Um, and in this case here, I have a nice bit of um, old bit of steel. Looks like it was a bracket from a shed. Um, so uh, we'll show you how to set that up shortly. And that's all you need. So uh, I'll get it set up and I'll show you how it all goes. Okay, first thing is to add uh, your electric soda. Um, I usually put about three spoonfuls in, three to four. It's not an exact science, so uh, I don't think it makes a lot of difference whether you have heaps more, it's probably just wasting it. As long as the water becomes a salty solution, then uh, it will conduct fine. Uh, next thing is to hang our iron or piece of steel on a hook. Um, I certainly recommend using just plain iron or steel. Uh, people have used stainless steel and I used to use it initially, uh, but apparently that produces chromium ions in the water and um, it's actually supposed to be a carcinogenic solution, so obviously we want to be safe, so there's no issues with iron and water. So I'll hang that in there, and I'll grab the hose and fill it up, and we'll dissolve the uh, sodium carbonate. Okay, while the tank's filling, let's have a better look at these pliers. Um, they came out of an old shed. They were under the bench in the dirt. Um, they're quite rusty. I can't see any brands on them. I think they're reasonably old ones. They're certainly not modern things. Um, they do move, but just, they're quite seized. So we'll give these a bit of a test clean as uh, part of this clip, and we'll show you how they finish up at the end. All right, the bin's full, um, or at least it's full up to the level I wanted it. Um, you'll see the piece of steel we have in the side there. The positive electrode of the battery, battery charger hooks on the top. Um, make sure the water doesn't go over the top of that connector, so it needs to stay out of the solution. Otherwise, you'll find that'll rust away. Um, the anode will corrode and um, it's a sacrificial anode so it'll gradually eat away and the water will end up quite quite mucky fairly quickly so you will need to clean it out if you're doing lots of pieces of um, cleaning up. So I've given it a good stir, um, the solution should be good to go, the um, positive electrode's fine so all we need to do now is hook up the little, uh, I'll do these pair of pliers and we'll get the project started. So all that's left to do is to um, hook up the pliers uh, to the negative electrode of the battery charger 
and I've just got a chain dangling from the roof of my porch here which makes it really easy to hang the item in the solution so we'll lower it down making sure that the uh, negative and the positive of the battery charger don't touch and short out the system so that's dropped down fine um, hanging in the middle of the tank I use this piece of wood just as a handy way to keep it in the middle and um, we'll leave that bubble away for probably a couple of days and uh, then I'll show you what it's done to the pliers and how we've perhaps value added to them and uh, maybe even put them back in the toolbox. Okay things are happening but not quite right yet so you can see from the uh, anode we've got little bubbles around the edge of it where it surfaces and that's good uh, that means we've got a, a chemical or an electrical um, transfer happening um, but however if we look at the pliers we'll see that there's lots of bubbles coming off the clip but none actually off the pliers so what that means is we don't have a good connection so I'll take them out and I'll just give a bit of a perhaps a little bit of a gentle file in one spot so they connect the of course the problem with cleaning rusty metal is that the rust uh, does inhibit a good connection so you just need to be careful of that I'll fix this up and we'll have another look once it's uh, working properly okay it's about 12 hours later um, and I did fix the connection on the pliers and so you'll see the water's quite a lot uh, more grimy than what it was yesterday um, the bubbles around the anode uh, showing lots of rusty color and uh, I mean, most of that's off the off the steel itself, the sacrificial anode. But if we zoom back in on the pliers, the water's a little bit cloudier, but we can see that there's definite definite bubbles coming off the full length of the pliers, and not just the clip. Uh, so that's cleaning very well. It's probably it's probably pretty clean now, but we'll leave it uh, for the rest of today, and I'll give it a clean up later, and we'll show you how it comes out. Right, it's now about 48 hours since I put these pliers in the electrolysis tank to clean. Um, I don't normally leave, well, I do often leave them this long, but um, I don't think it's necessary. I have left them in longer, um, and it doesn't seem to do any harm. Uh, so it's pretty much um, when you get to it, if it's going to be a week or more, obviously you wouldn't do it. Uh, now, you can see a lot of scum on the top here, um, including some seed things off my tree nearby. Um, it's probably a good idea to skim that off the water every so often um, to keep it as clean as you can and maybe scrape the anode down because it'll get a, a scaly rusty coating on it which probably inhibits the uh, the performance so a little bit of maintenance um, prolongs the time between needing to clean the tank out um, so it's the moment of truth really for these pliers we'll lift it up here and have a quick peek um, they've gone quite black I'll get them out of here and put them in the tank. Uh, water, uh, just a water bath to scrub them up, and we'll see how they uh, how they work out. Right, scrubbing time. Um, this is the messy part of the operation, but um, you can see that they've um, they've freed up instantly. Um, so that part of the cleaning has really worked well. Um, very black, messy part of uh, this. So probably best not to do it in the kitchen sink. But um, we'll give these a scrub up. Um, so a little bit of a the rub here shows instantly that that's smooth and clean and really nice patina so it takes the the rusty shale off very quickly so i'll finish cleaning them up and we'll have another look at the end so cleaning complete there's the pliers um, beautifully smooth to use they actually just drop so um certainly restored the pivot point uh, i couldn't find any brands on them i suspect they may be english there is an M stamped there, and on the other side uh, it looks like an O, so possibly um, original owner's initials, I don't think it's a company mark. But many times I've cleaned up tools that I haven't been able to see any branding to find that um, they are branded, and sometimes even uh, the Department of Defence brought arrow. Um, so it certainly makes something that, that probably would have been chucked in the scrap by many people into uh, saleable or at least very usable pliers now these ones not sure if you can see there but the uh, the teeth in the jaws are all quite good um, the electrolysis um, does pull all the rust out of all the little bits um, cleaning up as you saw was just the uh, the stainless steel wool um, you could sometimes I use a, a wire brush to get in awkward spots 
but it does clean up very well and um, the finished product is uh, much better than you saw at the start of this clip. Okay, just before I finish up, um, these pliers being a useful item, um, they'll probably go back in the toolbox or at least sell to someone else that puts them in their toolbox. Um, I'd probably just give them a bit of a spray with a, a spray lube of some sort. Um, Inox is quite a good one. It just lubricates and protects and stops the item rusting. Um, and pretty well there, your project's finished with those. A um, couple of other items I've done just recently just to show you. Um, a nice little um, cast iron uh, bottle opener. Uh, it's, I found that while fossy king amongst some dirt. Uh, so it's brought that up very well. Great little collectible. Uh, another one too, another tiny little thing found recently was this cute little brass tap. Um, just to show you it does bring brass up nicely. Uh, this could actually be bronze or gunmetal or something. It's got quite a pinkish tone to it. Um, and uh, it's brought that better back up really well. Great little collectible item. Um, and another item I found recently that was um, very rusty and you could barely read that section. And now, of course, we can. It's uh, Robert Sorby Sheffield um, Kangaroo brand warranted cast steel. Um, it's an ads head, um, quite collectible. Um, has cleaned up really well, as you can see. And it's made quite a nice item from something that was was um, not that desirable initially. Um, I've got $55 on it. Um, previously, you probably wouldn't have given me 10 for it. So a little bit of effort can really value add on some of these things. Um, now with these, the ads head and um, a few of these others. Rather than oiling them, I tend to use just a, uh, a clear lacquer. Uh, it just leaves a nice patina and they won't rust further. So for a collectible item, that's uh, that's the way I go. Anyway, I hope you got something out of this. Um, feel free to ask any questions if you need some clarification on the process. Um, and we'd love some comments of any sort, some feedback. Um, have a look at our channel and um, Hopefully you find uh, it quite helpful down the track with restoration, repurposing, reusing. Um, it's all about stopping stuff going into to waste, landfill, or even scrap metal. This is a much better option for these items rather than putting them in the scrap bin. It brings them back to life. Okay, until next time.